Welcome back. My name is Dr. Vera Fiedor, and today our session, which is session eight, is on sources of funds. As a financial manager, you need to be aware of the sources of funds and the avenues through which you can get funds to fund your business or your business projects because that's one of the core functions of the finance manager. Failure to be up to date on the sources of funds available to you as a business could spell doom because in the event of a cash need, you have no idea where to tend to in order to have access to funds. Now, typically, availability of funds to finance both long-term and short-term projects is important for all businesses. So knowledge of such sources, like I mentioned earlier, at any point in time, is very important. We're going to try to get students to understand the sources to which they can look to fund their businesses and the factors that may affect their choice of funding as and when they, they are faced with a particular business uh, project. At the end of the session, students should be able to explain the importance for business to raise appropriate volumes of funds. They should be able to state the internal sources of funds for a business as well as the external sources. They should be able to explain or state the differences between ordinary shares, preference shares, and deferred shares, which constitute external sources of funding typically, and also describe the major factors that affect the choice of funds. Now, why do we need funds? Now, typically, no business can actually progress or grow without funding. Now, throughout the life of a business, money need is needed continuously. Now, you may need to raise money mainly to meet a number of needs, but we can categorize them into three. It is either to start the business, typically, when it starts the initial expenditure, or to fund your business as a going concern to just keep it in business and more money flowing. Or in some cases, you need to expand the business for which reason you need extra funding. Now, in order to do that, you need to know where your money may come from, your funding may come from. Now, there are two major sources you could look at, and that may be internal sources of funds as well as external sources. Now, let's move on to the next slide to look at exactly where our sources of funds may be. Now, like I mentioned earlier, our sources of funds could be internal or external. When it is internal, it means that it's internal to the firm. It means the activities that happen within the firm generate these sources of funds. And when it's external, it means it's coming from outside of the firm into the firm. Now, when it comes to internal sources, we can look at typically profits, that is from the operations of the business, depreciation, that is literally more seen as payments that would have been made if we had rented a building or a particular capital item and then also from the sale of assets within the firm. When it comes to external sources, we can categorize them into long term and short term. In terms of long term, typically we're looking at equity capital and debt capital and they can come in many forms. Or when we look at the shorter term, we can look at overdraft facilities, notes payable and suppliers credit, which you also refer to as trade credit. Now let's look at the, one of the main internal sources of funds, and this is profits. Now the after-tax profit earned and retained by businesses is one of the most important and inexpensive sources of financing that a business can have. Now for most businesses, especially in their early years when they have not built reputation, this constitutes a very large part of finance to grow their businesses. Now, in as much as we have already said, we do know that, yes, profit is one of the key elements or retained earnings or retained profits constitutes one of the easiest forms or the cheapest forms of financing. So finding a right balance between how much profit is given out and how much is retained actually helps with this internal source of funding and ensures that in the quest to grow a small business, funds are, are readily available. Now let's look at depreciation. Depreciation can also be seen as an internal source of fund because this is a financial provision for replacement of worn out machinery. So normally for most firms, when, whenever you do depreciate, even though it's a non-cash expense, in a way it's a bit of a savings because if you had to rent the material, you would have paid out that cash. But for the fact that it has already been purchased, Depreciation is a form of funds inflow because you do not have to make the payment, but you get to use the facility in question. 
and then we can also make money by selling off assets. Now, typically the reason we need to do that is when we are not able to raise funds from banks or other sources, we may be forced to look at the possibility of selling assets such as company cars, property, and other subsidiaries in order to solve urgent financial problems. Now, these are mainly the internal sources of funding available to a business. Now, let's turn to external long-term sources. Now, external long-term sources usually has to do with share capital and debt capital. When it comes to share capital, we're going to look at three. We have ordinary shares. Now, this is the most common and is reflecting the residual claimants. These are normally referred to as the common shareholders and the true owners of the business. Now, for them, they are the ones who rise and fall with the business, and so their capital is more stable. And the dividends they get depends on how much profit is made by the firm and how much of it is declared as dividend to be paid. They are the ones who have the voting rights, but they are the ones who are paid last in the event of any payments that need to be made. Now we have preference shares. Now this group try to find a balance between debt and equity. They are typically, they are actually a hybrid um, group in that they like to still benefit from the claims as shareholders, in which case they partake in profit, but their profit is based on a fixed percentage that is attached to the amount of money that they have invested in the business, which is similar to debt, but they go on indefinitely with the business for as long as it's a going concern. So strictly, they are not the owners of the firm and therefore do not vote as far as business decisions are concerned and on the other hand as well they they do not get to but most of them actually have cumulative rights in in a sense that when dividends are not paid in a particular year in the ensuing period when dividends are declared for payment they are given preference hence the name they're given preference and they are paid first and foremost before ordinary shareholders can be paid now, then we have deferred shares. Now, these are held usually by founders of the firms, and they receive dividend after ordinary shareholders are paid. So they are the bottom in the sense that they defer their titles, and once, once everybody has been dealt with, these get to be paid. Now, that has to do with share capital. Now, let's look at loan capital. Now, this is money that is borrowed for a long period of time by a business. It can either come in the form of debentures, that's typically for bonds, we can take up a mortgage. We can have loan specialist funds in the form of venture capital, private equity, or we can have government assistance. So that the debenture holder is a creditor of a company. Now, of course, similar in the way because they are typically bonds, they are paid an agreed fixed rate of return, but they don't have voting rights. And the money borrowed must be paid by a particular day, typically referred to as the term to maturity. Now, there's also mortgages that are usually run on buildings or landed property. And typically, so these landed property or assets are used as security for acquiring the loans. And then income, if possible, from that is used to pay off the loan until ownership is transferred back to the business. Then we have the loan specialist funds, which are venture capitalists or specialists who provide funds for small businesses. And then they invest in these. And then after a while, when the businesses have grown, they divest of their portions, sell off, and they move on to find other businesses. Now, having looked at the long-term sources, now let's move on to short-term sources of funds available for a business. Now, this is funding that usually has a year or less for maturity, meaning that once you borrow such funds, you must make arrangements to have them settled within a year. Now, the main sources you can fall on include a bank overdraft. You can still have a very short-term bank loan, or you can lease a facility, use a credit card if it's available, or you could also use straight credit. Now, when it comes to a bank overdraft, that's usually short-term financing from your bankers. Now, the amount you can overdraw usually depends on the needs of the business at the time and the credit standing. Now, interest is calculated from the time the account is overdrawn and based on the interest 
that is charged on the account. Now, the loan, on terms of the bank loan, this is one which requires a rigid agreement typically between the borrower and the bank, and the amount must be repaid over a certain period of time or sometimes in regular installments, typically known as amortized facilities. Now, sometimes the banks may also charge persistent overdrafts or change them into loans so that borrowers must repay at regular intervals. Now, leasing is also another form of short-term financing where instead of buying a plant, machinery, or equipment, the firm is allowed to rent these without necessarily paying the last sums of money immediately. So the leasing company or the bank would hire the equipment for the use of the company for a period of time. And if the user can never own, we call that an operating lease. And if it's given for the firm to ultimately own it after paying most of the money, it becomes a finance lease. Now lease payments can be made either yearly or monthly. And then trade credit. Now this is the most common form of short-term financing available for businesses. In fact, it's one of the funding avenues that most businesses use to grow because in this case, the supplier is the one who provides credit between 30 to 90 days and then it's normally interest-free, all things being equal. And that is how firms are able to buy, sell, and then repay the supplier and take the next consignment. It's been known as the one major source of funding for most small businesses. Now, in order for you to make a choice of your funding to grow, you need to consider a number of factors. Now, one of them is the cost of the funds. In terms of interest payments and others, you need to find out how much will it cost to come up or use this funding source. If the interest payment or the funding cost is high, then you may consider um, alternatives. Now, the use or the purpose of the funds is also important. Now, it doesn't necessarily make sense to take a one-year loan to put up a building that will take 20 years to pay up in terms of uh, revenue from that property. So then the use and purpose of the funds to a large extent will also define where you should be sourcing the funding from. Now, the status and the size of a business also plays a key role. Large firms that have reputation usually have more sources of finance and also have lower rates of interest because of their reputation and a trust that they can repay. Whereas firms that are smaller in size and are younger without much reputation usually struggle to raise funding. So as a firm, the size of your business and the status plays a key role in which angle you choose to look to when you want to fund a project. And then the financial situation of a firm also plays a key role. Profitable firms usually are able to raise financing, but whereas poor, poorly performing firms are not able to raise financing. So for a firm that may want to be raising financing in the near future, it is important that you give some serious consideration to your financial status such that you build a reputation before the need for financing arises. Now, the amount of debt you also have within your firm to start with could also be a factor that will influence subsequent acquisition of debt or equity. So for a firm that is highly geared in that it has a lot of debt capital in its books, it does not make uh, or is not prudent in terms of managerial actions to want to proceed and take on more debt. Such a firm would have to consider equity um, avenues in raising funding. Whereas a firm that is purely equity funded may leverage on the benefits of gearing in order to rake in some good profits and some improved performance. Now, now let's look closely at debt and equity capital, especially in terms of the characteristics that define them and separates them. Now, for equity capital, we are looking at issuing stock, owner's investment, company earnings, and the financing from internal, whereas debt capital is typically borrowing. Now, the differences between that is debt has a maturity, whereas equity typically has no maturity date. Now, in terms of the claims on the assets, 
that gives lenders the prior claim in that when there's a need for payment or the firm goes into liquidation, debt holders are usually the ones who are paid first from income that is generated from the sale of assets, whereas stockholders can only claim after the firm has satisfied the claim of lenders. Now, in terms of income as well, on general income from business operations, debt holders have the prior claim, whereas shareholders have the residual claim. But the beauty of it is that because interest payments are a contractual obligation and constant, it has nothing to do with how much profit in total the firm makes, but it has everything to do with how much of a debt obligation is outstanding and the interest payment that is due. For which reason then, the claim on income is always fixed for the debt holder, whereas for the stockholder, it depends on how much extra profit has been made and what position the board of directors take in terms of how much dividend to pay. Now, for that reason as well, for debt holders, they can take a firm to court. So your lenders can take you to court when you fail to pay, but equity holders cannot necessarily take you to court. They can only agitate a move for a dissolution of the board in order to put in place a board that could pay them the dividends they so wish. Now, in terms of right to a voice in management, lenders are creditors and therefore not owners. They have no voice in company affairs unless they do not receive interest payment, in which case they will need legal backing to do so. Whereas the stockholders are the owners of the company and they are the ones who make the decisions that affect the firm's going concern status. Now, looking at that, long-term sources of debt, therefore, bring in leverage. Now, leverage, in terms of the meaning of the word, when you've got leverage, it means it gives, you can use that force to lift something better. So, from a science background, when you've got a lever, in the same manner, leverage can actually help to increase the rate of return on an investment when you use borrowed funds. The flip side is that it comes also with a risk that you could go into financial distress when the business doesn't improve as much as anticipated, in which case the debt obligations arising from this debt that has been taken on could actually clean out all the revenue made from the business. So those, that could also be a downside to using too much debt in the books. Now, there's an example of the use, the impact of the use of debt in a firm's books, and we can see that return to stockholders in this regard is about 210% of what they invested, whereas a purely equity held firm gets only 30% return. Now, this is without prejudice to the fact that there are pros and cons to both sides. So, before you decide, as we mentioned earlier in our introduction, you must make a, a decision as to what is optimal at any point in time and how much debt you want in your books. Now, that brings us to the end of sources of funding. Do not forget to take a serious look at your text and read and then try your hands on end of chapter questions to get deeper understanding. See you in our next session.